Um, speaking of Kevin Costner, Waterworld, and um, Gills, <laughs> um, Boeing will have to refly their orbital flight test over Starliner. Is that a good segue? That what works. I see it. it. I see exactly where you're going with that. What exactly <laughs> is happening here? I'm just the anti segue, basically. Um, if you, if <laughs> you're uh, moving backwards, yeah, I'm, I'm backwards. <laughs> you guys are progressing forward in segue timeline. I'm going That's backwards, funny. baby. I'm the anti. So, uh, so remember in December we've talked about this several times on the show. The Starliner capsule that was uh, for the um, orbital flight test. In December, it was the Starliner, Boeing Starliner capsule on top of an Atlas V. It got up into space. It was pushed off of the Atlas V rocket and left to fly on its own, at which point it started going kind of bananas. And it's just had so many problems. That that was due to a timing error where it thought it was totally like 8 or 16 hours or something in a different point in the mission. So it started doing really random maneuvers that did not match up with the timeline of the mission at all. <laughs> then later, they caught an error where it had it uh, deployed the service module, like the, the trunk of it, basically, uh, it would have flown potentially right back into the, into the capsule and, and damaged it right, damaged it in the heat shield right before re-entering. They had just keep, and the, there's explosive bolts that didn't perform, um, like they thought, or were a temporary solution. There was just a ton of problems with mm -hmm. the spacecraft. Thrusters were shutting down because they were fired for too long. Um, and everyone is sitting here going, I really hope they refly that mission before they put people on it. Because that was the, the point was to fly it uncrewed, test it all out, and then put crew on it, right? But when you have that many failures go wrong, everyone's just sitting here going, Oh my gosh, if they don't if they don't refly this thing, then something is corrupt here because yeah. NASA would be giving them way too much of a pass on this. Um and it come to find out it's they're claiming it's Boeing's decision. Uh, which might be true. I mean, Boeing does have a lot of new management in the <laughs> in their stream now, you know, in their chain. There's a lot of new management, and maybe this new management is saying, listen, it's either sink or swim for us. We have to step up. And I hope that's what's happening. I hope there's new management that doesn't want to take the shortcut, that doesn't want to try to weasel their way out of, you know, doing another test flight and putting humans on there, endangering their lives before they prove a system is right. I hope that this is Boeing's decision and not NASA's mm -hmm. push. So regardless- It's the right one either way. It's the right one either way. But I really hope that this really was Boeing's internal decision to refly this mission because I think a lot of us assumed they'd try to, you know, get out of it and be like, no, it's fine. We'll fix the problems we had in that <laughs> test flight is it'll be ready for people. Yeah. You know, it's like, why don't you prove it's ready for people? You know, prove it. I think you owe it to the safety of the astronauts to do that. And sounds like that's what they're doing. And I think that's absolutely the right decision. And we should be applauding them for doing that again, whether or not it's because NASA has their thumb on their, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the uh, consensus in discord seems to be that it was not Boeing's decision. <laughs> hey, Again, I, I don't know. They're having now, to do a lot I of mean, things. Hopefully it was. They're hopefully. having to do a lot of a lot of uh, uncomfortable things in their company right now. And and maybe, you know, like I said, it's sink or swim. New management. Maybe a lot of people. <laughs> this restaurant center, new management. Please come back in and trust our food. You know. Right. Well, and okay, this is supposed to fly on what rocket? The Atlas V. Okay, so it has an actual chance of of happening. Oh yeah, I mean it's Good. it's. It's happening and it should be flying humans already, like without mm. a doubt, really. And if everything had gone well in OFT, they would be looking at flying or, you know, with, with crew fl flight tests re relatively soon, like this summer, basically, uh, on a similar timeline as SpaceX's Dragon capsule, you know, which we're still targeting mid May at this point for Dragon, um, despite the world half shut down right now. So, um, I, I yeah, it's it's ready. The rocket's definitely ready. I mean, the Atlas V rocket is is the most reliable rocket you could be flying on. So, um, yeah, I mean, the rocket's ready. The spacecraft is not, and this is making sure that it is before they put people on top of it. Sounds like the right move. Yeah, yeah. Speaking well, of the right it's move, it's in Boeing's best interest. I mean, if they if they were to go up and lose, oh, God, the, I mean, they would. Yeah. Oh, if they put people on it and something happened. Mm, yeah, could, they would. Could we, that would be the end, honest. I think that'd be horrible yeah. for. Could Boeing. we officially put a fork in Boeing at that point? Right. Yep. Seriously.
Hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.